Welcome, dear friends, to Cardiac Radio. We're at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with one more, the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth is this book that was published 60 years ago in 1961 and comes to life so you and I can grab a hold of the truth. Why? Because the truth sets us free. You travel to a new country and then you don't know the rules. You go to jail and then you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know. Now you know you're set free. So that's something for us to think about. Many feelings you guilt, resentment, anger, etc., etc., because we don't know enough. Some people, they say, you know, I would love to have more positive feelings. When we get to know the truth, it makes us feel alive. We come out of the darkness. The truth is light. Light is truth. Today, Emmanuel comes to us to talk about that. Things that will be revealed sooner or later. And you and I are living at a time on earth in which the truth is prime. It's becoming prime. And it's nothing to do with Amazon. Yes, it's free. It's prime. More and more we get to know the truth, we are stronger to deal with the truth. Emmanuel today, inspired by a particular excerpt of the gospel according to Spiritism, he brings to us a message named Uncovered. And chapter 24. Chapter 24 of the gospel according to Spiritism, item 13. Chapter 24 is do not hide your lamp under a bushel. And item 13 is a quote from the New Testament in Matthew chapter 10 verses 32 to 33. Everyone who confesses me and acknowledges me before humanity will acknowledge and confess before my Father who is in heaven. And anyone who denies me before humankind, I will deny before my Father who is in heaven. What does that mean? This is one of the excerpts that is under the title, The Courage of Faith. And courage is one of the things that is treated as a trademark of those who follow the good news according to Jesus' very words to Bartholomew in chapter 8 of the book Good News through the medium Chico Xavier. The medium Chico Xavier psychographed the message today. Emmanuel came along and talks about something we need to know. He says to us, there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. Jesus, these are Jesus' words. And we're living that very time. The current times we're living in more than ever we come to know of the importance of dealing with the truth. Before we go to Emmanuel's message, let us measure where do you think you are in terms of handling the truth? Is it too hard? When you hear the truth, is it too impacting? Or is it like, oh, well, the truth is the truth. 
nothing but the truth. And I embrace it because the truth comes from God. Which one of the attitudes do you think you are today? Let us mark it down. Mm -hmm. I have here a book that I bought today at Michael's named Be Happy. It's a good book to write down what we are feeling. So let's write down. We go there, pencil, paper, and say, today I am handling the truth very easily or not too easily because blah, blah, blah. Science says that this kind of journal is so helpful to us, so useful. It doesn't need to be every day. Whenever we recall, we go there and write it down whenever we need. Talking about our emotions. And Emmanuel comes today to go even deeper. He says, at present, the extent of human progress is quite significant in the various fields of intelligence. And it's true. Details of microscopic life are glimpsed by sagacious researching eyes. Nests of the infinite cosmos are touched by delicate astronomical instrumentation. Multiple apparatus, apparatuses auscultate the physical body revealing the inner life of our body. Innumerable in experiments attest to the greatness of everything that exists within the earth itself. Advancing in all directions, humankind reaches eloquent intellectual heritage, mastering laws and principles that group beings and things maintaining the balance and the order of the universe. But in the direct proportion of knowledge that is conquering, the spirit distinguishes wider and more fascinating horizons, stimulating the efforts for reasoning. The more you know, the more the immensity of the unknown widens in your eyes. The more logical the study, says Emmanuel, the more apparent is the lack of its own discernment before the magnificence of the Almighty. No soul can conceal for itself its own manifestations in the framework of life. And likewise, before the law, no one can hide the slightest thought. Everything can be unveiled, weighed, measured. Thus, not only the reality still ignored by us, but also the mentalization and actions of our own path will be revealed at noon, whenever such a measure is necessary in the exact place and at the right time. There's nothing hidden that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be made known, clarifies the Lord. Therefore, let us remember the living teaching at our own pace, acting in our private sphere as one who lives in front of a crowd because our minimum movements in solitude or in shade, may also be brought into the field of plentiful light. <gasps> Catch your breath. Why? Are you afraid? More and more we get to know of people who seem to be nice or are pedophiles. Great. Great in the sense of like unveiling the truth. More and more we get to know of people who are behind human trafficking, 
more and more we get to know of people we are who are behind drug trafficking more drug dealing more and more we get to know of people who claim to be religious but have a shady life but what about us we don't do those things right we don't but what do we do that we do not want people to know today the question is tough but it's important this pandemic is about that. Mentor Joseph says to us that this pandemic is about getting into people's homes and cleansing what? The psychosphere that we create. But we need to change. That's why it's wonderful to watch these programs at home. Because the spirits that usually are butlers of our lives, they either change or they go away. Let's go to the book Sex and Destiny by Andrea Lewis through Chico Xavier. In that book, we come to know of the beauty of understanding how, who owns our homes spiritually. Who is the owner of your house, spiritually speaking? Do you know? You think it's you? No, it's not us. Options. One, the protecting spirits. They are the administrators of our home. Or the obsessors. The low order spirits who are our family spirits, who are sympathizing with us with our addictions. Who is the butler, the administrator of your home, spiritually speaking? We need to know because we're coming at a time in which everything we are will be unveiled sooner or later. You know, reality shows, reality shows, right? Kardashians, all these reality shows, there's so many. And people are like, oh my gosh, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. But Emmanuel is saying, we should live a life in such a way as if there were cameras. He says, living in front of a crowd, as if we have cameras here. Ah, because when I have the cameras outside in the street, people watching me, I'm polite and I'm sweet, but when it comes to my home, I'm brutal and rude and rough, despotic, authoritarian. Sometimes with our own selves, we don't have anybody watching. I go to the internet and I start Googling shady things. Watching porn. I know people don't like us to talk about it, but Mito Joseph says we need to talk about it. Because watching porn not only opens ourselves to be vampirized by vampire spirits who like those sexual addictions, but we are vamp vampirizing. We become the very obsessors of the people we're watching. Wow, Emmanuel is saying here, no one can hide the slightest thought from God. Should we be afraid? No, because God loves us. But we should be vigilant, not afraid, but educate ourselves. What's the solution? You may be asking, right? What do I do now? Because he says, everything we think and do will be revealed and will be made known. We can't hide. You can't hide. I can't hide. None of us. 
can we do? It's a practice of self-forgiveness. It's a practice of forgiveness to the others. It's a practice of self-education. The beauty of spiritism is to tell us there is no punishment. But as much as there is a microscope to see the inner life of our lives, the MRIs, CT scans, we also have ways to know who we truly are. Who are we? If you are watching this program or listening to it, you're being called to coherence. I am being called to coherence. We can't escape. In 2012, Mentor Joseph in a meeting, mediumistic meeting when we were at the Spiritist Society of Baltimore, he brought a message that is unforgettable, coherence. And he says to us that we need coherence to align thoughts and feelings, words and actions. As we grow coherently, we're happier. We're no longer looking at us and feeling that we're good and bad and it feels awkward. And when people say praises, we feel like, mm, you don't know me, that's why you praise me. No. The other day, we were talking to a person and saying, when you undermine yourself, devalue yourself, it's as if you're telling God that God didn't know what he did when he created you. So we can't go there. We need to bring our self-esteem up. Up. How? By being coherent. Think. If I'm being recorded, because we are. The universal camera exists. And we are under the watch care of the divine cameras. There are divine cameras and this is really reality show. Though it's not a show, it's just life. And one day, everything that we don't show to others will be revealed. Why wait for that moment to adjust ourselves if now Today, we can do so. Emmanuel finalizes by saying, let us remember the living teaching at our own pace. That's beautiful. Something we need to learn to respect the pace of people, our own pace. But, he says, adjusting our private sphere, being coherent in our minimum movements, knowing that everything will be brought to life. I think this is one of the most powerful messages we've read in this book. Every single message is so deep, but this one I've never read anywhere else because it tells us about the reality of life. You and I are going to be much happier if we become less fragmented. Right now, and I'll do a drawing here. I know some of you said you like it. So I'm going to use it again. Okay. I'm going to use it again. It's the whiteboard. Let's say that this is us. Okay. This is us. Let's say our mental field. This is our mental field. Mental field, our mental field, our mental field. Let's say this is our mental field, okay? And once we have our mental field here, let's say in this mental field, I have, let's put some color, shall we? I have beautiful things happening. 
beautiful thoughts, words, actions. And then every now and then I have uh, questionable things. How do you feel? Let's say the cross means negative things. And let's say that the heart represent to us the positive thoughts, feelings, words, actions, things, right? This is what we want to do, right? Let me put this here just to make it a little bigger. Good. And now, how do you feel when you realize you have good things and not so good? You feel awkward. You feel like sometimes an imposter. People say, oh, you're great. And you end up, uh, you don't know me, right? How do we heal it? By being coherent. So here's the word of the day. Practicing coherence. Coherence is about doing the right. Yes, it's about doing the right. The right thing. Yes. We need to practice adjusting ourselves, ourselves, thoughts, feelings, words, and actions. How do I practice good thoughts? When I have a bad thought, Joana D'Angeli says in the book, Happy Life, substitute it. When I have a feeling that is not harmonious, I go there, substitute it. Let's say I think something ill of somebody and then I correct myself, but that person is a child of God. It's as if I go there and erase. Oh, it feels better now because in I not only erased, but I added a good thought. This is the beauty of life. Mm -hmm. It's not only annulling the evil, but it's adding the good because it's only good or evil. Constructive mental thoughts, mental currents, or destructive ones. So let's say I said a bad word, then I go there, correct it, erase, and then go there, ooh, say a good word. Saying sorry is a good thing. Let's say I did something that I don't approve of myself. I go there, erase it, and then I go do a good action. I only erase the bad with the good. Even your science shows it to us. I erase traumatic memories by creating new good memories. So you and I, just doing the good is enough to erase the bad. If you focus on bad and say, eliminate it, you naturally eliminate by doing the good. You displace it. God is so good. So today you and I are being asked by Emmanuel, who is our tutor today, he's saying, remember the living teaching at your own pace and act in private as if you were in front of a crowd. Pay attention to your minimum movements when you are by yourself because everything will be brought to light. You can't hide. A life that is transparent, so good. We've never heard of shady things with Jesus and he's our guide and model. What is the exercise in the next 24 hours? Visualize the universal camera, okay? This is our exercise. Visualize the universal camera and feel that it's in front of you. Thoughts, feelings, words, and actions are being registered. Let us then, as soon as we observe that a bad thought came along, a bad feeling, a bad word, a bad action, 
Let us go along and do something good. Think something good, feel something good, see something good, and or take action towards the good. Naturally displacing the bad. The universal camera. This is the exercise in the next 24 hours for you and I. And thus, humanity is going to really evolve. We're very thankful to the good spirits who are here with us at this moment. We feel their presence entering our homes and healing us with this beautiful awareness that life is transparent. There is nothing to hide because we want to love and love needs to be expressed. Everything else is just the absence of love. Let us love with all of our might today and always friends. Thank you so much. Let us stay tuned at Kardec Radio because there's always more to nourish our souls. And for now, we wish you lots of blessings and a beautiful day under the universal camera of God. Thank you, friends.